Kenya's Education Cabinet Secretary George Magoha has announced that stakeholders have shelved schools reopening until 2021. Speaking to the press, Magoha explained that primary and secondary schools will resume next year in January with a phased reopening of colleges and universities on a case-by-case -case study. He stated that the 2020s school calendar should be considered lost. Owing to the coronavirus pandemic that saw all learning institutions throughout the country close in mid-March. The directive also gave instructions for reopening of universities and college of college, colleges. He said the universities will re only reopen when they meet the requirements of government guidelines. We are now joined by uh, Daniel Muye, who is a Kenyan-based uh, journalist with NTV to help us understand all of this. Good to have you, Daniel. Yeah, good to be here too. Thank you for the invitation. All right. So, so help us understand the, the you know, the Kenya uh, style of education. H how have they been studying before the pandemic and what difference does this uh, new development make? Okay, before the pandemic, students usually go to school. You have those in basic education, that is uh, the primary school, uh, those in secondary school, then you have those in the universities. So all of them have been doing the physical learning whereby you have to go to the classroom and be part of the uh, classroom where the teacher is teaching you directly from there. But then after the pandemic, now things changed and uh, people went uh, online and started doing out the virtual learning. So the, the biggest challenge that you're having with this announcement, actually it's, it's a historic one. We've never uh, seen such kind of a thing happening in Kenya before where um, uh, a whole year is, is just lost and people have to repeat classes again because now those are the things that uh, people are now grappling with just to understand how they are going to do that even to the end uh, of the year. So usually, uh, as you asked before uh, the pandemic, it used to be just the normal learning where students have to walk uh, into school. Uh, for universities, of course, we have those programs that are um, uh, done virtually even before the pandemic. We need to used to have uh, those people who are doing distance learning who could uh, just log in into the internet and do their learning from wherever they are if they don't have to go to universities. Mm -hmm. But a bigger percentage of the learning has been the physical learning where students, pupils are required to be in the classroom, seated with their teachers and doing their learning. Right. I mean, Daniel, cancelling the, the, the year's calendar, moving it to 2021 is huge because if you're saying uh, everyone is going to start all over again and everything that is done in this year is lost already, according to uh, what the Cabinet Secretary for Education said. How is this sitting with students uh, if you've been able to speak to any of them? Yeah, actually, yesterday when uh, the cabinet secretary or the minister for education was making the pronouncement, I was in studio actually hosting the uh, the show in studio, and immediately we started getting reactions from teachers uh, as well as educators um, and other stakeholders in the education sector. And, and the aspect is all of them have different uh, challenges. When it comes to the students, the students, I already knew that I was complete my end of this year or by the end of this particular time. So the me how to wait for one more year is a bigger challenge for me. You also know that there's a social aspect whereby in a family setup, a student knows that or someone that is behind me by one year. So I'm going to part with me. Again, the good thing maybe to say is that everyone has to do so the challenge that happening on the side of the students is that uh it's, we've realized it's like a lot of counseling for them to accept that the side of the parents is uh, the challenge that most of them already paid school fees hmm. for the whole year. And even for those who have not paid school fees for the whole year, you can imagine they'll have now to pay school fees again next year for their children to go through the same kind of learning that they were hmm. going this year. So, uh, programs to compress their curriculum to finish their courses by the end of this year. So they had already finished. Yeah. So next year, they'll be paying school fees again to repeat the same. Mm -hmm. On the side of the teachers, uh, most of the teachers are uh, about 58 years of age. So even when these people still go back to the physical learning, it will not be possible for them to, to, to go back to school. And most of them are the head teachers and the leaders of the schools. So even for those who are doing the national examinations, who have been allowed to go back to school this September, that is for uh, standard eight, those who are completing elementary or primary school, and form four for those who are finishing secondary school who have been allowed to go in September to prepare for those national examinations. Those teachers are above 58 years of age and those with underlying conditions are not allowed to go to school. So if your subject teacher falls in that category, it means 
you, you miss out. So, so there's a lot of confusion for now. Uh, people are still trying to understand how they're going to, to go about that. But the ones I've mentioned, those are the initial uh, responses that we got immediately after the announcement from all those stakeholders. Yeah, I can imagine when you said there's a lot of confusion there, because it brings me to my next question. If the government is cancelling this whole uh, session and saying everything is beginning next year, are they, are they providing any kind of waivers, some kind of say, well, if you're coming to school, maybe you're going to reduce the school fees. Is the government saying anything in that line at all? Okay, I think going forward, that is one of the things that we will be expected to, to probe as, as journalists because so far, uh, no guidelines at all. It was just a pronouncement. And actually, uh, the cabinet secretary yesterday was very categorical that after I finish my statement, I'm not taking any questions. Because uh, that to me means that maybe they are still in consultation to understand what will happen. Uh, that, those pronouncements came from the Ministry of uh, Education but it was a product of a consolidated uh, discussion forum by a special committee that was uh, formed to discuss the way forward on matters of education in Kenya. Yeah. So we believe that committee will still have now to think uh, and come up now with uh, the step-by-step explanation on how this will be achieved but so far it has not been provided and it's not only in education even in the transport sector mm -hmm. those in transport are told the economy has been opened you can travel but you have to get a clearance certificate for you to be allowed to travel so how are they going to get the clearance certificate it has not yet been explained so even the transport sector is in disarray they are right. still confused waiting for clarification the mm -hmm. same same thing with the, the, the education sector at least for the universities they're proceeding on with the with the virtual learning which is now the online learning mm -hmm. But for primary and secondary, there are those schools that are still going on with online learning. But the uh, minister said that that is also null and void. It's, it will not be recognized. So parents are saying, but people are paying for this online learning. What happens? So it means that is already lost. All right. Daniel, thank you so very much for bringing different perspectives and aspects to that story. And do keep safe out there too. Okay. Thank you. You too. All right.